There are players who go down in history for their play, for their ability to make the unbelievable, the normal. Others go down in history for their leadership, for their ability to be an extension of the coach on the court. Well, Lance Stevenson didn't go down in history for either of those two reasons. In Lance's case, it's pretty safe to say that the reason he went down in history was his antics. We all remember when he blew in LeBron James's ear in that game against the Miami Heat. Indiana Pacers, including this, blowing in the ear of LeBron James, and James' reaction, <laughs> he, can't, he can't believe it. We all remember his guitar sellies. Fouls to give. Stevenson throws it up quickly and nails it! Lance! <laughs> Play that guitar, Lance! We all remember his hilarious flopping attempts. Hibbert goes crashing to the floor. And then a foul on Stevenson on the block. <laughs> he needs a rest right now. Two fouls on Lance Stevenson, who's doing a little bit of everything for the Indiana Pacers. But how bad was Lance Stevenson actually? Since he was a kid, Lance was on the radar of North American scouts. In fact, since Clark Francis, a talent evaluator, saw him play at Rumble in the AAU tournament in the Bronx, his talent already pointed to that of an NBA player. Plus, his mentality was up to par. Stevenson wasn't even high school age when he challenged O.J. Mayo, one of the best prospects in the country, to a one-on-one -on -one at a summer camp. However, Lance did not follow the path that some of the top prospects usually follow. As the 2010 draft approached, the guard was more under the radar. True, some mocks like NBADraftRoom.com placed him at the end of the first round. But when the draft night arrived, Lance was picked with the 40th pick by the Indiana Pacers. Even if it was through a second round pick, that kid from Brooklyn who dreamed of reaching the NBA had accomplished his goal. But the NBA is not an easy league. We all know that, right? Being a second round pick comes with a number of disadvantages. The first one is the salary, which goes down proportionally with respect to the pick in which you've been selected. And the second is confidence. Franchises that select a player with a lottery pick have made a significant bet on a player. They trust him, or in other words, he's gonna play. But if you're picked in the second round, you're more thought of as a last resort who probably won't see much playing time. That's the reason why Lance, despite a great performance in the Summer League in Orlando averaging 15 points in only 23 minutes, could only play 12 games during his rookie season. But the truth is that it could have been much worse. His performance in that Summer League at least got him a roster spot in a young Frank Vogel's team. There are players who don't even get that chance. In the 115 minutes he played in his rookie season, Stevenson played a completely meaningless role. He scored 13 shots from the field all season for a total of 37 points. His percentages in such a small sample size were not very encouraging. Unfortunately, the situation repeated itself during the following season, where Lance was only able to play 10.5 minutes per night on average in 42 appearances during the regular season. Even worse, he started the season in Vogel's rotation and gradually disappeared from it. But something happened in the 2012 offseason. Lance had figured out how the league worked. At 22, he was ready for his coach to count on him, and his best asset was a tremendous ability to defend any player in the league. As a result, Stevenson not only became an important player in the Pacers' rotation, but he also got the starting spot for a majority of the 2012-2013 season. Averaging 9 points, 4 rebounds, and 3 assists per night, Stevenson was a somewhat talented offensive player who stood out for his defensive and playmaking skills. He was not a shooter, neither three-pointers nor free throws, and above all, he was not a scorer. But he was a role player who fulfilled his role. Lance was a special player because he was able to get under the skin of his opponents. He was able to get in their head rent-free, and although it didn't always work out well, Vogel often benefited from having him on the court. He was also a player with that charisma that could energize the crowd and the whole team. With crossovers, with defensive stops, even with dunks, when Stevenson played at home, all Pacers fans and all his teammates really felt that energy. Lance's next season would be the best of his career, averaging 14 points, 7 rebounds, and 5 assists per night. The guard became one of the most important players for the Indiana Pacers, who finished that season with a spectacular record of 56 wins and 26 losses, finishing first in the Eastern Conference. In fact, until March, Indiana had a record of 46 wins and 13 losses. But different decisions of the franchise damaged the chemistry of the team. The arrival of Evan Turner, who was having his career season when he was traded to Indiana from Philadelphia, increased Lance's dissatisfaction. 
and when the team lost for the second consecutive time in the conference finals to the Miami Heat, Stevenson decided it was time for a change. The guard was almost an all-star that year. He was highly sought after, and when he hit the market as a free agent, there were many teams interested in him. So after signing with the Pacers in a sign-and-trade, it was the Hornets who acquired the shooting guard. With a contract of $27 million over three years, which at the time was a lot of money, Lance was ready to continue his upward progression. But that was the beginning of the end. Lance would only play one year in Charlotte. He started out having a lot of importance, which over time was diluted due to terrible shooting percentages. That season, Lance shot 37% from the field and 17% on three-pointers. Yes, 17%. You heard right. His contract was worthless. It was more of an impediment to any franchise that wanted to build a winning team, since his salary was equivalent to 15% of a team's entire salary cap, and Lance became a journeyman trying to find his place. It wasn't with the Clippers, where he only played 15 minutes a night in 43 games, in which he at least regained his efficiency. Nor was it in Memphis, where he would only play 26 games before the team got rid of him. Nor with the New Orleans Pelicans during the following season, where he played a total of six games. Exactly the same number of games he would play in Milwaukee a few weeks later. Lance went from team to team with his bags trying to find a spot in a rotation. He was a player who was so close to being an all-star a couple of seasons before, it wouldn't be that hard, would it? Well, it was. Eventually, Lance returned to Indiana, his home, where he was able to find stability for a full season, something that seemed utopian compared to his last seasons. But despite playing decently, Nate McMillan didn't count on him for the following season. It was the Lakers who now decided to give him a chance. Lance would add another 68 games to his career total in what would be his penultimate season in the league and was again out of contract at the end of the season. In 2021, the guard was only 31 years old. He'd shown no athletic regression, but his game was no match for a modern NBA where a guard without a shot becomes an offensive liability. Lance would play six games for the Atlanta Hawks, again in a testimonial role, before returning to the Pacers at the end of the 2021-2022 season. There, he had the last great performance of his career, scoring 30 points against the Brooklyn Nets of KD and Kyrie in a loss. But that would be one of his last memories. At the age of 31, the guard was left without a place in the league. No one was interested in him. His skill set at the beginning of his career was comparable to that of Draymond Green. He had good handles and was able to facilitate the offense, although was not a threat as a scorer. However, over time, this comparison became completely obsolete. Green was a much better player, or at least more consistent. One aspect that often differentiates good players from not-so-good players is consistency. Being able to deliver an adequate performance every night that at least is not detrimental to the team. But Lance didn't have that gift. He was an inconsistent player, capable of 20-plus point performances that were accompanied by others in which he barely looked at the rim. His defensive talent also faded over time, in part due to the loss of his lateral quickness which, along with his lack of concentration, made him a below-league average defender. His spark and ability to intimidate defenders was no longer there. There was no reason for any team to want him on the court. Beyond his 2013-2014 season in which he fell just short of being an all-star and finished second in the voting for most improved player, Lance Stevenson's career offered nothing else. He did not know how to adapt to the modern game, did not know how to find his role or his niche in the NBA, and was never able to show progress in his game that would allow him to play more than one season in a franchise. Lance Stevenson had that lone season of excellence with the Indiana Pacers. In other words, he was simply a one-season wonder.